you know what you mean by the constraints so constraint means uh, you already spoken me the restriction at the set of the rules to define the solutions of a problem so we can have the multiple solution of a problem and how we can satisfy the our solution of a problem with the our different rule that is the topic we have to see over here before starting this topic uh, we have a very important terms over here because without knowing the term we will not able to understand the constant satisfaction problem so i'm just taking uh, five minutes to understand the adversarial search what is mean by the adversarial search we have seen the various searching techniques under the search strategy that is also known as the local search so in the local search we have seen the various such strategies what are those i'm speaking once again bfs dfs unicost uh, uniform cost search and a star search a star search and greedy search we have seen the various searching technique in two various flavor one is the uninformed and informed search after this we have a adversarial search now you can see the example is already representing by an image that is a chess example but what does it mean by the adversarial search? Adversarial search basically is a search technique where we examine the problem which arises when we try to plan ahead of the world and other agents are planning against us. So here we have a one opponent. So with the help of the one opponent or by the definitely by the help of the some rules, opponents also uses the same rules. And I'm also using the same rule. So like this example of the playing the chase game. So adversarial search basically what is the role of the adversarial search in this case we try to examine the problem that arise when the try to plan ahead of the world it means if i'm just moving uh, my pawn that is a p a w r or this in the what we can say the world i'm just, uh, just moving from one point to another point by pulling by the some rules definitely of course pulling by the some constraint then i I need to take uh, about, about uh, I need to take uh, uh, care about the other opponent's point. Suppose I'm moving this direction, so I can lose the search pawn. So that is the reason. So adversarial search term is coming from this point. So agent of uh, is planning to play the game against the opponent with the help of the various mechanism, and that is under coming to the searching mechanism, which is known as the adversarial search. So these are simple terms we have to keep in mind. The role of the adversary self is more important while playing the game. And that part we will see in the uh, next to next class. What is mean by the game playing and what is mean by the knowledge representation? So that is reason for but for understanding the constant uh, uh, constant satisfaction problem. This topic is more involved with the game playing. That is reason I am taking here the meaning of the adversary search over here. So adversary says basically I'm speaking once again is search mechanism in which the opponent will opponent or because as a is it I'm planning to play the game as a safe size so at least I can save the my pawn or I can save the my chances and of course I can get the more and more points to win the game that is the only meaning of the adversary search. So uh, now from this point uh, we have to start the constant satisfaction problem. So now you have uh, all these terms right now, the constant satisfaction problem. So as I told you, speaking once again, I got the input from the student. What is mean by the constant? So what do you mean by the constant? That is a restriction one, a restriction. There's a one point I got this from the student. Second point, I got the some set of the rules. Okay, some set of the rules I'm writing once again, some set of the rules. Uh, two, okay, the, Better solution, I can write in different way, better solution. Uh, better solution uh, against, uh, against, uh, opponent while playing the game, just uh, while playing the game. while playing the game so this is what it should be proper so this constraint i'm writing here that should be 
understood properly. So now we have seen the meaning of the constraint, and now as we know the meaning of the satisfaction and problem, so no need to discuss about the satisfaction word and problem. But constraint word should be clear in our mind. Anyway, from this point, uh, we have to understand the our entire topic about the constant satisfaction problem. So in our uh, previous uh, topics. <clears throat> Uh, we have already studied the searching techniques, which are only associated with a single agent that aims to find the solution, which often express in the form of the sequence of the action. So if you remember the previous example, what are the previous uh, uh, various example we have seen? If you remember the eight means problem, eight was a problem. What was the problem we have seen? So these problems are just often followed by the single agent. It means there will be the one person who can try to find a solution. But there might be the some situations where more than one agent play important role to search the solution. And that is under coming to the same search space trick. In this situation, usually uh, this will be happening to the while playing the game. OK, so if you're talking about the uh, chase game, so one opponent will be there and as a uh, opposite uh, opponent, I will be here as a user, as a being a myself. But when talking about the other games where more and more uh, in more and more opponent may come, just like example of the various online gaming uh, tool or applications where in spite of myself uh, or in spite of the opponent, I can find the many or thousand opponent. It is also possible like the online playing game. So at the time, multiple agents play important role. So at the time, while playing the game, multiple agents can be used. To handle such situations, they, they have a constant satisfaction problem. So the reason of this uh, involves the use of this word, constant satisfaction problem. That is the reason we have to use uh, uh, multiple agents. So we have the multiple agents in the gameplay. But when we're talking about single agent, everything is okay. But when talking about the multiple cases while playing the game, then constant satisfaction problem of this topic is required. So because of problem where multiple agents are required. Like the example I can take over a simple example. If you are uh, studying from the internet, so what you are doing, you are having the one source that is from the internet, you are just only the one person who is just dealing. So that is a single agent as a being single agent, you are just taking the data. But as a being a uh, faculty, I'm just handing the multiple students. So here the how many students I'm having, not single student. I'm dealing with the multiple students. So multiple agents are playing important role. Same situation we can deal with the game play. So the environment with more than one agent is termed as a multiple agent or multi-agent environment. In which each agent is an opponent of the other agent and playing against each other. Each agent needs to consider the action of the other agent and effect of that action on their performance. So, searches in which two or more players with conflicting goals are trying to explore and the same search tree space for the solution. And that is called the adversarial search and that is also known as the gaming searching mechanism. So games are model or is a search problem and heuristic simulation function. And these are the two main factors which helps to model and solve games in AI. Before discussing more things, just uh, I'm writing uh, very uh, simple terms over here. So from this word, you can understand this topic. If I'm talking about the, see, if I'm talking about the single agent. So single agent, there will be no issue. But when we have the multi agent, multi agent, so in this environment, so how many here there will be the one, uh, we can say one user will be and uh, one opponent. One opponent. But in this case, we have the one user while we can have the multi agent. This picture you can easily understand. Uh, I can write something here while watching the game-based movie. 
So you can just keep in mind the scenario. And there is a very, very uh, famous movie. I'm writing here. So how many agents? How many agents were in this uh, movie? Multiple agents, and each and every person, each and every agent are following the same rules. Is it true or not? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So this is the example of the game playing. And rest of the detail about the game playing, we will see. But we are talking about right now the constant satisfaction problem. So it means the every agent who are involved to play the game are satisfying the same rule or not. If someone is not satisfying the rule, so he will lose the game. And what is the penalty he is imposing or she is imposing? As you thought, you have seen on the part in that movie. So that is a good example I can take over here. So from this point, I can start the constant satisfaction problem. So this is a base I have spoken over here. And what is the adversarial search? I have already taken the idea. I have already given the idea with the help of the chase game. From this point, uh, we have to start the our this topic. So constant satisfaction problem in the artificial intelligence, what is telling to us? So we have seen the many techniques like the local search and adversarial search. We have seen a couple of them itself to solve the different problems. The objective of every problem solving technique is one. The objective of every problem solving technique is one. That is to find a problem, to find a solution, to e to reach the goal. That is our objective. We have already decided so far. We have seen the many many algorithms so far. So although in adversarial search and local search, there were no constraint on the agent while solving the problems and reaching to the its solution. So previously, if you remember the, some example or some algorithm where we found that there is no specific constraint or no specific rules we have been implemented. Whatever we have, we have just used, we are just trying to solve the problem. So we can choose any path. If you remember the yesterday class, what we have taken uh, from a just uh, from ACT to BCT, we are moving so by the very path. So okay, if you think you can move to this path, you can no issue. But you are choosing the optimal path because you save your time. That is our point. But if you do not want to save your time, you have the lots of the money, you have the lots of the patrol, you have the lots of the uh, time you can utilize. No issue. You can choose the longest path. But there's no question, uh, no question there are fixed. So that is the reason from this point uh, we have to take care about the, this topic. So in this topic, what we have to see, we will discuss the different type of the uh, problem solving method and that is known as the constant satisfaction technique. So constant satisfaction technique is what that is the problem solving method and problem solving concept. We have already seen what is mean by the problem solving and how we can solve. So what are the various uh, components we have seen in the problem solving? If you remember the initial state, goal state, path cost, Okay, and an intermediate other components we have taken. So by the name, as a suggesting constant satisfaction problem and as a constant satisfaction technique, it is understood that the constant satisfaction means to solving a problem under some constraint or rules. So constant satisfaction is what basically it is a technique where a problem is solved when the value satisfy certain constraint or rules of the problem. Such type of the technique leads to the deeper understanding of the problem structure as well as its complexity. Uh, I'm taking a very simple example right now, then I can explain a more detail. Uh, here I'm taking the one more example, then you must tell me uh, as a being a computer science person, what I'm doing. I can define the A, okay. I can define the B and I can use the A equal to A plus B. So how many statements are required for addition? Three statements. Or I can do one thing A, B and C and C equal to A, A plus B. So how many uh, variables I'm taking? I'm taking three variables here. I'm taking the two variables. But from the first uh, point, what I'm getting, I'm just, just saving the memory. That is the my so the rule is clear. You can add the two numbers, but the rules are defined. The rules are defined. So you are using the two rules. Yes, sir. I can get the addition of the two values. I can get so which rules you can, which value you can take equal to a plus b or c equal to a plus b. It's a choice. 
but the other factors you have to keep in mind for uh, taking care of, of the battery system that is the time complexity and space complexity so what you are doing you are choosing the equal to a plus b for saving the time but the problem we have if uh, other rules are imposed in the previous value of the a i must need to use again then i can't use this so this is required okay so this is applicable when uh, a value is required if i'm using the previous one my a values will be override so that is the point we have to keep in mind so while solving any problems what are the rules i'm using what are the rules i'm following so that is followed by the constraint satisfaction problem from this point we have a definition so what is the definition i'm speaking once again constraint satisfaction is a technique where a problem is solved when its values satisfy certain constraint or rule of the problems such type of the technique leads to a deeper understanding of the problem structure as well as the complexity so we need to define its complexity we need to get the solution with the low complexity that we can see we are getting the good solution from this point we have to understand the our constant satisfaction uh, com, uh, technique in detail way uh, before that uh, just uh, let me know right now from your side the basic idea of the constant satisfaction problem is clear to all the people what is the constant satisfaction problem what is the constant satisfaction technique we have to see then we have the lots of the example by which we will see and so we have the, some theoretical points some uh, definitive part so we will systemize it so introductory part of the constant satisfaction uh, technique is clear or csp that is constant satisfaction problem is clear what is mean by the this term yes sir okay so uh, now uh, we are talking about uh, its uh, uh, beautiful term that is the constant satisfaction problem the constant satisfaction i am speaking that is a technique as i told you so uh, it also required to have some component so what are the its component uh, just uh, let me take this example so from this example you can understand what are the its component from this components i can write step by step so constant satisfaction depend on the three important components so what are those components one is a first one i am writing here that is component i am writing here for a better man components csp csp is depend on depending on the following component so from the for example you can say first one is a variable first one is the variable or set of the variable now can you tell me right now is it true or not because without the variable how you can use the information so information can be manipulated by the variables only so we can say the set of the variables is required variable we can take the one variable when we have the one agent but when we have the multiple agent so we have to use the set of the variable is it true yes tell me it so if talking about the next one you can see on the screen that is a domain so what is mean by the domain just can anyone tell me right now what is mean by the domain just look at the image and tell me what is telling to us what is mean by the domains or set of the domains look at the image and tell me activity sir domain is the like it's like uh, reach of the variable uh okay reach of the variable i can accept this point so from this image we can say x y z are the variables so uh the x value which are holding by the domain so domains are just a value repository we can say variable repository values repository of the value we can say it is a value values repository 
of variables. Can we say in simple terms? So x is holding by the one, two, three, four. Y is holding by the one, two, three, four, and z is also holding by the one, two, three, four. Can we say? Yes. If you are agree with me, yes. Tell me answer. Me. So domain is basically or the set of the domain is just nothing which is the uh, in uh, point or the uh, locations we can say where variable resides. So there is a specific domain for each variable. Yes, of course. So x is a numerical kind value, so we hold the numerical data only. If we're talking about the string, just that is one. We should be talking about the different kind of the data. So different kind of data will be held by the different kind of domain. So being a student, you have only privilege to access some information. But being a faculty, I have the most lots of the privilege. So that is the reason. So I have the my domain. You have the your own domain. Is it true right now? Yes, tell me. Is it true or not? I'm writing the same thing which is written over here. Just tell me. Anyone who have any doubt? Next one, we have a constant. So a uh, constant is just nothing, which is set of the constant we can say, which are followed by the set of the variables. You can see though in this image, what are the variables? We have the x, y. So c1 and c2 are the two constant. C1 and c2 are the two constant. Please keep in mind, these are the two constant. With the help of these constant, which are defined here, if you're taking the x, y, if you're taking the x, y, then x is taking the value 1, 3, and y is value taking the 2, 1. If I'm taking the y, z, so what are the combination, multi agency? So x and y, x and y. So here I'm taking about the multiple variable I'm taking. Multiple variable, so I'm taking. And this is similar to just like the multi agent. And by z I'm taking so one two and z I'm taking the four one because I have the ranges of the value the domain where I can take the value of the variable that is one two three four so from the domain I can so constant is what, what constant is defining that is the how much information of the value variables and domain from the domain I'm taking so I can define this point by the our constant so constant can be defined by the our curly braces. You can see if I am using the set of the constraint. So C1 and C2, I am taking the two constraints. So in the constant satisfactions, domain are the spaces or the repository, we can say, where the variable reside. And following by the problem is specific constraint. These are the three main elements of the constraint satisfaction techniques. What are those? I am speaking once again. That is a set of the variables. You can see that is a we have a set of the domains or domains, and next one we have the constant or set of the constant we can have. These are these are the three elements as I told you, and the constant values, constant values consist of a pair of the scope and grid. I can write over here, just uh, this because uh, this point in your mind. The constant value consists of a pair of the scope and relation. The scope of a tuple variable which participate in the constraint. So here, what are the constraints I'm taking? So if I'm writing here, if I'm writing here, so C1 and C2. So this is defining that, just uh, uh, let me write two points. This is defining that is the scope, and next one is the area. This is scope and this is the area. So this is the two points so we can take to make a pair of the our constraint value. So one is scope, another is a relation. So the scope is a tuple of the variables which participate in the constraint. And REL that is a relation is a relation which include the list of the values which are variables can take the satisfy the constraint of the problem. So here we have a C1 and C2. So C1 and C2 are double. Uh, what is this one? Yes, can you tell me right now? C1 and C2 is what? C1 and C2 is our set of the constraint. So our information will be composed by the two parts. One is a scope and relation. So scope, I'm speaking once again. A scope means that is a tuple of the variables which participate in the constraint. 
tuple of the variable. So what are the tuples we can pay? X, Y, and Y, Z. Just uh, look at this example. So it talk about the, uh, let me change the different color. This one. Yeah. So this one. So scope means I'm talking about the tuple of the variables. So I'm talking about the tuple of the variables. So if you're talking about the tuple of the variables, so here C1 just contain the one tuple that is a X and Y. And next one it is holding by the by and Z. Next time talking about the relation. So relation is a relation which includes the list of values which our variables can take to satisfy the constraint of the problems. So now uh, X will represent things here. Just uh, relation I can take here. Yeah, relation. So the relation means we can see the list of the values. List of the values. So what are the list of the values which are holding by the upper scope and those are the top of the variable that is x and y. So if I'm talking about the x, y, it contains the values that is the 1, 3, 2, 1. And if talk about the y, z, so it contains the 1, 2, and 4, 1. Now, so everything is already written. So I'm just uh, writing from the screen once again over here. So these are the two uh, points or two parts we have to see. So what is required? It's again I'm speaking over here. The main three elements are those variables, domain, and constraint. And the constraint values, I'm speaking once again, the constraint values that consisted by the pair of the two parts, what is scope and relation. What is scope? A scope is just tuple of the variable as I have already written over here that can participate into the constraint and the relation is a variable that includes a list of the values, which are the variables can take to satisfy the constraint of the problem. So from the, this point, we can easily understand. Just look at this point right now. Suppose X is mingled with the Y. So what are the value I can take only? I can take the X value one and three only and Y can take the two one only. So in this case, Y and X is not able to take the value four. Is it true or not? If I'm taking the combination of these two values, X and Y, so I can't able to take the four values from my example. Is it true? Can we take the, can we take the uh, four value? Just tell me right now. Can we take four values? If I'm choosing these two variables, can we take the four values? No. The four values I can't take because that is not a part of the its list of the values. So four value I can't take. All the four is a part of the domain that is satisfied our X, Y, Z. But while defining this constraint, I am just defining this is not applicable over here. So how I can take? Let me take one more example to give you more idea and detail way. Let me take the uh, uh, a real example. So I'm writing here. Then let me take the real example. Real example. So this is the point. The students. I'm taking the real example. Students can able to participate in the X1, X2, and X3 subjects. Okay. So X1, X2, X3 are what? Just can you tell me right now? What are these X1, X2, S3? A student can participate only in these three subjects only. So what are these X1, X2, X3? Variables. Ah, that is a good point. So these are the variables. Yes, this is a good point. And next point uh, I can try to take. Uh, the X1 can be, can be ranges from uh, your uh, 10 marks to 40 marks. Okay, so these are what I'm writing here. I'm just taking only random example for understanding this topic only. And uh, X3. So, so this is what this is the our as per the definition. This is known as the domain. Now, next, what I'm taking. If you remember the point, so what are the three components? First one is a variable, next one is a domain, uh, this domain. 
and that is a constant. So if I'm defining the constant, just I'm defining the first constant that is C1. So this can be defined by the two parts, one is a scope and a relation. So if I'm talking about the scope and relation, so in this case, I'm taking the X1 and X2. If a student is choosing the course, please keep in mind, if a student is choosing the subject X1, X2, so he has to get the minimum marks 20 and maximum marks is 30. So these are the values I'm giving. And in this case, this is the only point. Oh, okay, I can take this one. So from this constraint, if you are getting the 40 marks, suppose in this constraint, if you're getting the 40 mark, that is not applicable. Why? Why? Why it is not applicable? Why it is not applicable? Because as per the constraint, if you are choosing, if you are choosing x1, x2, so 40 is not defined by the our defined by the constraint. So this is not satisfied the rule. So constraint should be satisfied the problem. So this marks will not be applicable to this pair that is holding by the over this value, the x1, x2. And that is so here, here, so here, so here, constraint, constraint, satisfaction. Okay, let me write correctly. Here, constraint satisfaction method is required. Constant satisfaction technique is required. From the domain, you can take, but uh, as per the uh, our constraint, defined constraint, we can't take the full thing. So that is the reason. Okay, so unlike uh, like the C1, we can define the many constraint. Okay, C2, I'm taking, so I'm taking the only X1 and X3. Here I can define the 10 and 40. Here I can define the 20. Okay, so that is the reason I can define the 40. I did why I just want I can take. Okay, so no issue, just like this one. So 30 I can't take. So that is only reason. If I'm defining the another constraint, so C3 I'm defining, which is just holding by the x1 and uh, uh, x2 and x3. So in this case, I'm taking. I can take the. 10, 20, 30, and 40. Even we can also define the another constraint that is C4. We can also define the constraint like X1, X2, X3. Multi agent we are talking, so we can take the multiple agent. Here I can define all the value like this one 10, 20, 20, 30, 30, 40. So there are many constraints could be possible. So here I have just already written the various. So now these are the various components of to satisfy the our constant satisfaction problem. So now it is clear to all right now if you are if you are trying to solve the any problem, so what is the need of the what is the importance of the constant satisfaction point? Now it is clear right now. Yes, sir. So that is the reason I am not taking the bookish example. I am taking the real mm -hmm. example, which is the part of the, our life as well. So. This statement, please keep in mind at the time of the interview. This define the need of CSP. This point. Okay. So with the help of example, we have seen the need of CSP. So I will keep this slide as it is to you for notes purpose as well as the interview purpose. So after understanding this point, so I am sharing the one more example. Just look at this point right now. So we are defining the, all the points. Okay. So the domain of the each individual values is a set of the tuples and the corresponding original constraints. We have C1, C2. This is the inspired from the previous example. So this is the point. So another representation of the our problem. So this is the point we have. So uh, solving the constant satisfaction problem. So uh, we require the two parts. What are the two parts? One is the state space, another one is a notion of the solution. The state in the state space can be defining by the assigning the values to sum or all the values. So we can define the sum values by the uh, uh, x1 equal to uh, b1. Like I'm taking a simple example, x1 equal to b1 or x2 equal to b2. So x1, x2, x1 and b, x1, x2, b1, b2, what all? So these are defining the our state space of the 
our problem. So what is the state we are belong to and what is the corresponding values we have. So all these two things are required to define the problem by the two points. One are the state space and other one is a notion of the solution. After this point, uh, we have uh, some uh, theoretical points. So, so we need to understand what are the possible uh, assignment of the values we can take. So if you look at this example, uh, the big question we have, what is the big problem? And uh, you have to keep in mind how we can assign. Randomly, I've taken over here. Here, yeah, just keep in mind. Randomly, I'm taking the 10, 20, 20, 30, 40 here. Yeah, okay, I'm taking. But there should be some rules to, of, to all these values. And these can be identified by the assignment steps. Okay, so what is the assignment steps? So we have a three steps or three different kind of the assignment uh, terms why which we can understand. So let me right now you have understood all these problems. So can we taken the idea about the assignment steps? Tell me right now. Do you have any problem? So you can ask. Yes, we can explain or we can discuss the assignment steps. What are the assignment method we can take to assign the values from the door? Just tell me right now. You have any problem? Anyone? No, sir. Okay, so theoretically, uh, we have the uh, these three kind of the assignment. So what is known as the consistent or legal assignment? Theoretically, you can understand an assignment which does not violate any constraint or rule. So definitely, if I'm taking the any value which is not to violating the any rule, so I can say this is the legal assignment. OK, that is a consistent assignment and complete assignment is just is saying to us an assignment where every variable is assigned with a value and the solution of the CSP remain consistent and such is known as the complete assignment. But that is another part. We have the partial assignment. So an assignment which assign the value to some of the variables only such type of the assignment is called the partial assignment. Just definitely if I'm assigning some values from the my domain to the my constraint, but that is not satisfy the many rules that is not satisfy the uh, uh, my solution because as a constant i'm applying to the my solution but i'm not getting the proper solution so what is sense of the such assignment so in spite from the such story we have three kind of the assignment one is consistent or legal assignment and complete assignment and partial assignment so at the time of the interview elanik can ask you the question how we can assign or what kind of assignment approach you are pulling so uh, legal assignment will be the always better and then we can say the complete assignment. We can't, we can't more cross on the partial assignment because if I'm using the partial assignment and such assignment approach I'm implementing to my constraint and some is satisfied, so some rules are satisfied to solve my problem. So I can have the many rules or I can have the many rules. So what would be happen? The burden of the rules will be imposed on the my solution. So my solution will be very heavy. So it is a better idea. I suggest you always try to use only the legal assignment, just like the example of playing the chess. So you will not take the such a movement by which you can lose your point or use your low point. So you will take the uh, concern point, or you will take the appropriate movement so you can win the game or you can at least uh, uh, defend the opponent to a uh, movement. So that is the reason we have this kind of assignment. So consistent assignment or legal assignment will be always better rather than the partial assignment. So these are the three way we can. So what kind of the question we ask into the examination? I can ask. So I can write over here. Uh, in an in a constraint, in a constraint, not uh, what? Uh, how we can? Uh, how and which type of assignment assignment of values from domain from the domain is more applicable is more applicable so this kind of the question may ask you to do. So I suggest to just go to this point and you must take an example to explain the idea. So you have already gone through the various examples. So I'm not going to all the example detail, but I'm just saying to 
i will discuss something with the after the couple of the minutes i will discuss some problems you can take any example and you can interrelate to the any assignment problem or assignment to approach a research problem and you can explain so these are the points. so these are three points now we were talking about the domain constraint and uh, the variable so domain also having the two parts because everything is not a fixed so we have the two types of domains so we were talking about the domain so what is the domain domain just like is a repository which is just holding the values of the variables so we can have the two types of the domain one is a discrete domain and the other one is a finite domain so discrete domain you can understand like just like the uh, start date so that is an infinite domain which can have the one state for multiple variables one state for the multiple variables just like the start date uh, can anyone tell me right now the example of the discrete domain a real example discrete domain example just i need the discrete domain example You can take the example start date and just uh, start the state. Yes, discrete domain example. Can anyone tell me the real example, real life example? What is it mean by the discrete domain? Sir, real numbers. Okay. Uh, could you tell me the real example where discrete domain we can see? So we can understand the, in general way, we can understand this concept. Discrete domain, what does it mean by discrete domain? Yes, tell me right now. I'm drawing something for a betterment. Just tell me right now. You can think and tell me. I'm just thinking something for your betterment. Discrete domain where we can find in the real application. Okay, so, uh, just tell me right now. What are you thinking? No, no, just so I can explain. Anyone just please tell me right now. Okay, so can you tell me right now what you're observing on the screen? What I have drawn? Four people are racing I means yeah, super, competition. Super. That is a good observation. So for these uh, four people, the start date will be same. Start uh, uh, start date will be same. Just tell me right now. Or yes, start date yeah, start date and time will be same. So yes, sir. Yeah. So start time for all these people will be same. Will be same. But after reaching one certain uh, certain the point, or we can check the finishing line. That time may change. So someone is reaching on the after two minutes. Someone reaching after the four minutes. Or someone reaching after the one minute. A few um, seconds. We can include. So that is, is in start date, we are allotting to the our multiple agent or multiple variables the same. That would be same. So that is a discrete domain. But uh, after reaching on the finishing lines, so their uh, their finishing time will be updated by the individuals. Some uh, some may co may come on the common time. We can say some. But here I am taking only the for example. We can have the multiple. So multiple variables we can have. So in the infinite domain, which can have the one state for the multiple variables. So what is the state? So start time will be the start time is what that is our starting state. So we can say this would be the starting state. Starting state will be same for the multiple variables. So discrete domain we can have. But if you're talking about the finite domain, just look at the finite domain. It is the finite domain which can have the continuous state describing the one domain for one specific variable. So here, what we can say, if I'm taking example, uh, star time was common to all, common to all 
बट फिनिशिंग टाइम विल बी बट फिनिशिंग टाइम विल बी चेंज so based on the performance or based on the speed of the runner the finishing time may change so each and every person each and every individual person may have the different different time on the basis of the completing the race or reaching on the finishing line and that is known as a of a finite domain so we can store the value of the variables Into two way, one is discrete domain or finite domain. That is a matter. So, if you talk about the this point, so what you are observing over in this example, uh, uh, here uh, x one is holding the value one point ten, twenty, thirty, forty. So, all these are the domains we can have. So, there is no x point uh, in the x one, x two, x three may have the values from ten uh, to fifty. So, x one can have the ten, twenty, thirty only. X two, uh, this this would be x two. Just let me write correctly. Yeah. X2 may have the 30, 40, 50 only, and X3 may have the 30, uh, 10, 30, 50. So there is no uh, guarantee that uh, each and every variable in the domain must keep the same size of the values. The number of the values or the information may update it or may change, and that is a way which we want which kind of the domain you are forming. It is a discrete or finite. So same uh, from the example, we can say in the constant satisfaction problem, we can have the Many uh, different type of the domain as well. So here we have this one. So now this is clear to right now. If we're talking about the variables, then we have seen the assignment. So how we can assign the variables? But we tend to upon uh, about the think about the domain. So I am taking the real life example and drawing something over here for better knowledge. So what would be the possibility? So definitely domain can also have the two type of the flavor. Variable we have seen, domain we have seen. So now it's time to see about the constraint. So constraint can also have the different type because these are the three different elements. So we are studying or we are trying to understand the elements. So sec first element uh, we have seen the variable. Second element we have seen the domain. So now we are on the third element. So third element is dealing to about the constraint. So definitely it can also have its type of flavor. So one is the unary constraint. It is simplest type of the constraint that restrict only the one variable, one values for the single variable. But binary constraint is saying to us is the constraint type that relate to two variables. So a value, a value x2 will contain the value which lies between the x1 and x3. Yes, it is also possible. So x2 may have the two different values. X2 can have the multiple values. So the binary value here. So we have the two values by the constraint. So that is. Following by the other binary constraint is the values holding by the individual single values so that can be the unary. If talking about the global constraint, so the constraint that type involves the arbitrary number of the variables. It doesn't mean it can have the three values, it can have the two values, it can have the five values. So we can say this is a global constraint. So that is a very very important point we have to keep in mind. So the fundamental point should be clear in our mind because we are on the Platform for the base where we can uh, launch the of a rocket to learn something. So the building the rocket or the base should be clear. So that is the reason we have the different type of the constraint, different type of the domain, different type of the variable assignment. So variables can be the different type of the form that is a data based on the data. But it is required to understand how or what kind of the information we are assigning. Is the partial assignment, full assignment, or it is just assignment by a different way? So that part we have seen here, consistent or legal assignment. So that is the reason I have explained this term. So here we have seen the variables part. We have discussed the type of the domains. We also covered the constraint. These are the constraints. So uh, now tell me, uh, uh, these are the basics we have seen. Uh, is, is it clear to all right now, or just yes, anyone who have any problem right now? So you can also ask me any question. Uh, yes, tell me right now. You have any problem? No, sir. Okay. So just can you tell me right now? Um, Is there any guarantee? Just think and tell me because you have to involve yourself to learning purpose. 
So can you tell me after thinking, is this guarantee every time we can have the constraint in numerical way only? Is it guarantee we can have the data into the alphabets or something like this? But it is also possible. There is a guarantee every time the data should be in from the linear way. Non-linear we can also have. Just tell me right now. Is it possible or not? Can we have the linear constraint or non-linear constraint? Tell me, think and tell me. Can we have one? <coughs> think and tell me, can we have the linear constraint or non linear constraint? We have a different, different type of the data. So it is also possible to have the linear constraint, non linear constraint we have. Okay, so to understand this, all these things, what I have, I have some examples. So I would like to share some example rather than unnecessary. Just now, let us move to the CSP problem. Uh, just uh, can you tell me, have you ever seen this kind of problem, graph coloring problem in the analysis of the algorithm? Have you understood this problem, graph coloring problem? Have you seen? Just tell me, tell me, have you seen all these problems in the graph curling problem? So these are graph uh, CSP problem means by examples. Let me write correctly. The CSP problems by examples. The CSP problems we can implement in the graph coloring. So graph coloring is what? Where the constant that is no adjacent side can have the same color. Tell me yes or no. This could be the graph building example. Yes, tell me. Yeah. See, if I'm just uh, drawing this, just look at the different color. So I'm taking here the red color. I can fill the another uh, part by the different color. Just look at this one. So. This one I am filling by the different color. Okay. Next, if I just want to fill the different color, so it means in the graph coloring uh, problems, two different reasons can not have the same color. If they are having, it means I'm not able to justify the my problem. So what is the rule? Two different reasons cannot have the same color. Okay. Now, let me take the another. Now, let me take another color to complete or fulfill the my this point. And the uh, last one I can take this one. Uh, this one is a purple color. This one is a uh, blue, and this one is green, and yeah, uh, red, and yeah. So, what is telling to us in the graph scrolling problems? Is it said or the two different reasons? I get right here. Two different reasons cannot have, can't have same color. And this is what? This is our constraint. Okay, so this is our known as a constraint over here. And that is a rule. And if you have an applied value. Now it is clear right now the CSP problem we are looking at the by this example. Now it is clear. The constraint satisfaction problem means we can't use a two different uh, same color to the different reason. Now it is clear. Yes, sir. Okay. So if I look at the other problem, so just uh, look at this problem. What this problem is telling to us and what you're observing. Your observation is more involved. So just can you tell me? Just tell me right now. You can see. What your Sir, observation? No, no adjacent states have same color. Yes, okay. So that is the point. Uh, we can write over here in a simple way. Each and every state 
each and every state must have must have a different color different color to identify that is a point to why why it is required why i'm using the color to identify uh, uh it's a state boundary so that is the reason it's a state boundary that is the reason so if i look at the this so this is so i can easily see the uh, it's state boundary so the reason the problem I know. So I am understanding the problem. So I am understanding the problem after understanding the problem. I am just able to see what kind of constraint I must apply to see the my boundary. Just only the uh, coloring. So graph coloring is a real example we can apply to identify the state's boundary. So that's that is a good example. So this is a real example. I always believe on the real example to understand the concept. So I'm taking the real example to understand the topic only. Let me take this example. This is a Sudoku playing you already seen many times. So just uh, what is its rule? If I'm talking about the Sudoku or by playing the Sudoku, no repetition I can't use. So if I'm using the four, two, six, if I'm using the four, two, six over here, I can fill the one here. I can fill the seven here, but I can't take the seven uh, very close to the six over here or on the right side of the seven because repetition is not applicable. So that is the reason I can take the any number which are remained. So four, two, six already taken, one and seven is already taken. So nine I can take, three I can take, eight I can take, a five I can take. So as per the rules, as per the policy, I have to use the appropriate. That is the point. And from the uh, rules, what is on the rows and columns, the value should not be repeated. So this is a rule I can understand. So that while game playing, I can also apply the constant. So constant means I'm speaking once again. What is the constant? Zero to nine number can be repeated in the same row or column, but that is a not possible. So this is about rule while playing the pseudo. Now it is clear right now. The puzzle we have a solution here. You have already familiar with this kind of thing. Yes, tell me right now. The problem is clear. These two problems are clear. What is the graph coloring problem? And next one was the pseudo playing. Yes, tell me. Yes, yes, sir. yes. Okay. And queen problems we have already seen in the our previous part. So n queen puzzle problem and n puzzle problem that we have seen that is known as the eight puzzle problem. So we have already discussed. So I am already highlighting the with the yellow color the n queen problem or the uh, eight puzzle problem we have already discussed. So I'm not going to discuss right now. Rose world. The real application, the other application where the CSP is again more applicable. So in the crossword problem, the constant is what that there should be the correct formation of the word. I can't take any word. I can't take the letter. It's my choice. I can take. But it is what is the rule? What is the constraint? What is the constraint? Can you even tell me right now what would be the constraint in simple way? The formed word should be meaningful. Should be meaningful. Okay, I'm just telling the X, Y, Z. There's no sense, but I'm writing the just like this one. Uh, uh, just uh, uh, like this one. I'm just taking the. Uh, uh, Zylo words, okay. X, Y, I love. I'm just making. So it also having the, some sense, and but it does not have any sense. The so meaning should be meaningful. That is a tool. Okay. C R I C R I. So creep I can take. So from this one birth I can take. So that is a crossword. Is a curved example. Okay. I hope you have already played this kind of the crossword. Have you played? Just tell me. So after this point, uh, next we have the little square problem. And you, uh, I'm sharing to you all the people this problem. Can you tell me right now what is this problem? Just uh, read uh, some points and tell me. So let us get problem. In this game, everything is written. In this game, the task is to search 
task is to search the pattern which is occurring several times in the game. So that may be simple, but will contain the same digit. Yes, can you can anyone explain this problem? Whatever so uh, whatever problem I've shown that is we are familiar. But here uh, we have looking at the uh, we are seeing the unfamiliar let me skip all so just read the uh, see the image or teach some points and tell me yes tell me yeah, let me skip along who is telling sir maybe it's one number can only appear once in a row mm -hmm. so the task is to search the pattern which is appearing several times in the game so that may be supple but will contain the same digit so two, three, four, we have three, four, two, we have. Okay. Just uh, okay. So if you are uh, looking at the, my observation, so I'm also looking at your observation. Two, three, four, we have. So two, three, four, we have. This five also adding. Okay, so four, three, two, we have these are suffer. Four, three, two are suffering. Five also adding. So if I'm adding one more uh, the the numbers, okay. So suffering is also possible. Next one is a four, two, three. So five. See, sequence has changed. What was the previous sequence? Four, two, three. So, but here I am getting the four, three, five, two. Okay. And here again, the five is also added over here. But what I'm getting, I'm just getting those scan, but after suffering. So that is the point. So let me just care problem is any kind of the problem that is a what? So what is its rule? Its rule is already written to the our point or heading. In this game, the task is to search the pattern which is occurring several times in the game, but they need to suffer will contain the same basic. Here I can take the uh, three two seven four. I can't take at the last time. You can see. I can take the three two five four. Five is occurring because I'm adding the five over here. But after submitting, but I can't use the other uh, 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 seven or eight. Or I can take the other digits which are not applicable over here. So submitting is also possible. So that is an answer. So let me skip on. One more problem you have already uh, seen uh, in the many times so while studying in the fundamental book to security. That is a cryptographic problem. So the problem is most important constant. That is, the, we cannot assign the different digit to the same character, and all digits should contain a unique alphabet. And this kind of problem you will understand through the network security and information security. This is a basic, basic security algorithm, basic cryptographic problems. Yeah. So by applying the some rules, so some rules are written over here. So what is the rule? Just you can say, it is written over here. Rule one. And case two. So this is defining the constraint. This is defining the constraint. And with the help of this constraint, we can encrypt and decrypt. So with the help of this thing, what we can do? We can encrypt and we can also decrypt by applying the this rule. So decryption and encryption is possible by the this constraint only. So you know the what is the uh, decryption mechanism you are applying? What is the encryption mechanism you are applying? So this encryption, encryption mechanism you can create or generate with the help of the constraint, and that is known as the cryptographic problem. You can say. Okay. So uh, what we have covered in today's class, uh, we have seen first point. I am writing over here. We have seen what is CSP. What is CSP? After this point, uh, we have seen the CSP element. So I'm writing here, what is the CSP element? If I'm speaking about once again, so CSP elements are the variables. Variables uh, or the set of the variables we can say. Next one, we have the domains. Next one, uh, uh, we have constraints or set of the constraints. Variable to we can take about so this can be understood by the our assignment. Okay, so this can we have extended by the assignment. Here we have seen the legal assignment, 
partial assignment and complete assignment. Okay. Here I can take here we are discuss about the legal assignment. Legal assignment. Legal assignment. Partial assignment or complete assignment. So I'm writing all the assignment points what we have covered and theoretically we have seen. And uh, next one we have seen the complete assignment. Complete assignment. And now if we talk about the domain, so domain we have seen the two types of the domain. So what are those, those domain? If you remember in your mind, so domain we have seen the our uh, if you remember the water domain that is the discrete and finite. So with that example, we have seen if we talk about the constraint. So a constraint uh, we have seen. So what is mean by the constraint? We have seen what is the set of the constraint we can apply. So constraint can, we have seen. So can anyone tell me right now what is the constraint and what are the type of the constraint we have seen? Just tell me right now. Okay, tell me right now what are the constraint we have seen? Unity constraint, where the single value is possible, binary constraint, and last one is the global constraint. Here we can have the one, here we can have two. Globally, we can have the n number of the, so I'm writing here. So this is the point one, two, and I'm just writing based on its number of the variable we can use. After this point, so uh, after all these points, so what we have covered, we will try to uh, find the point that is CSP problems. CSP problems via examples. Okay, so here what we have seen, we have we have seen some real life examples uh, as applications we can say so in the exam time if i'm asking this question what are the applications of uh, csv problem so you will need to explain the graphical thing uh, so to the playing and green problem crossword little scale or cryptographic problem so you can explain three or four depending on the number of the beaters of the questions so uh, this is the summary of the our class. What we have done. This summary of the class. Yes. Any problem in these topics? What we have covered today? Just tell me right now. You have any problem? So let me know right now. Yes. Tell me. I think uh, all these topics uh, today we have seen are very simple topic with the help of some images. So I will share the notes to you and then you can utilize the notes for learning purpose and you can utilize your backend to run some things in more detail. So you have any problems so you can ask me. Any topic, any points you are not able to keep.